I think I may have made a new friend today. The little Canada Jay that has been around came to me after seeing Blue and then Lentil taking food from my hand. I haven't had a Gray Jay in years and I seriously would love to now. They are such clowns and ridiculously tame. Later on I saw Sweet Girl. She's so silly, it's adorable. Blue responded to her cries by standing by her side and even gave her a quick preen. I love those Jays. She was upset because of her mozo and Abby being there, and they were upset too. The little Canada Jay found us again, but he seemed preoccupied, probably looking for insects to eat. Snowy showed up too. It's nice to see her coming around again, now that the babies are raised up. I brought some suet with me for the Jays, but the Canada Jay was the only one who took an interest. Good to know that they like that stuff. Today I decided to bring a boiled egg for the Canada Jay. He seemed to really love it, as I knew he would. Sweet Girl showed up after, and all I had was seeds, but she was fine with that. Blue Jays aren't too picky this time of year. Hatch, Maggie, and the chickadees, Bud and his little friend enjoyed some too, but Hatch was a little annoyed with Sweet Girl being here. One of the white-throated sparrows came out, and I had no peanuts left for him either, so I gave him seeds, which he was okay with. Beggars can't be choosers. I went to search for the other Jays and Sweet Girl followed me and we ended up finding Blue and Abby. I had forgotten about the few peanuts I had in my pants pocket. I was happy that I could give them each a little treat. For a few minutes I recorded them flying in slow motion. I love watching them like that. Eventually, my little guys showed up. Tiny, her mate Tim, Kiwi and Lentil, and Angel and Mini Tim. I think Mini Tim is Tiny and Tim's offspring from last year, hence his name. Finally, her mozo showed up now too and was reunited with his sweet Abby. I love her mozo. He has the most beautiful eyes I've seen on a blue jay. The hazelnuts are ready for harvest and I found Feisty Jay busy collecting them. While there, the little Canada Jay came by. He hopped his way over to me and when I sat down to hang out with him, he got up on my boot. That's so typical of these Jays. I didn't have any peanuts left for him though, so I tried giving him a hazelnut, but he wasn't interested in the slightest. I guess it's a Blue Jay thing. From what I read, they don't hammer into nuts the way Blue Jays do. On the very last leg of my journey, I saw Snowy and Webster. For whatever reason, Webster pecked some of her feathers off. I don't think he was trying to hurt her. Maybe some kind of affectionate gesture, albeit a very odd one. This morning, I was greeted by my silly Blue and Sweet Girl. Sweet Girl is so emotional. Blue is always eager to be by her side. Their sounds are pretty unique from the other Jays, so much so that I actually know when Blue and Sweet Girl are around just by their sound alone. In fact, that's how it is with the other Jays that I know really well too. I used to think I was nuts until I kept testing it over and over and realized they do sound different from one another. I had a game of catch the peanut with them to settle them down. One of the things I love about this time of year is that I get to see all kinds of warblers. Won't be long before they'll be leaving though. I think today is the first time I noticed that some leaves are starting to change. 
When I found Hatch later on, he was moody. He had a lot to say. All because Dart, another male nuthatch, was intruding on his territory. I will link a video up in the right hand corner about these nuthatches. On the way out, I saw Bud, a chicken he had known for five years. Something obviously caught his attention because he started making the high pitched Z call. They make this when they see a hawk. I never did see it though. For more on chickadee calls and what they mean, I will link it up in the right hand corner. I started to wonder about the little Jay. I hadn't saw him at all yet, but just as I was starting to worry, he appeared seemingly from nowhere. I was so happy to see him, and I thought it was time he got a name. But I wasn't sure what. Then I saw him catch a peanut that almost got away, so I decided Peanut would be a good name for him. This morning was absolutely gorgeous. The rising sun cast a beautiful golden hue over everything, and the fog made this place wonderfully atmospheric. The light revealed all sorts of spider webs, too. I never saw so many spider webs before, and yet I passed through here almost every day. Interestingly, there were no spiders on them. I guess it's too cold. A couple trees were completely covered in them. Never saw anything like it. Sweet Girl was alert and emotional like she always is, silly girl. Her mozo and Abby are her problem, but after she settled down and got over it. Peanut showed up, but it was brief, and I only got an out-of-focus video of him. It was great seeing him, though. The Jays weren't the only ones moody today. The Nuthatches, too. Well, Kiwi and Lentil's group, anyway. For whatever reason, their offspring seem to have stayed, and a couple of them come to me for food. That ticks Kiwi off pretty good. He was so moody that he even went after Lentil, his mate, at one point, which isn't really typical. His attacks seemed to make Lentil moody. She went after the little guy, too. So much excitement. Tawny and her crew were a little more emotional than usual, as well. Tawny allowed Angel to stay for a second, but ended up getting fed up. A fledgling, not sure if Tawny and Tim's from this year, has been around and he tried getting on my hand but wasn't too sure about it. Ended up looking like a hummingbird. What a silly bunch of birds. On the way home, I noticed that the apples are turning red. They'll be good to eat soon. The temperature today is a very nice 20 degrees Celsius. Not bad for September. The first Jay I saw today was Blue, then Squawky and Abby, but no Sweet Girl or Hermoso. So I went looking and eventually found Hermoso, still no Sweet Girl. I came across some butterflies feeding on what looked like squashed apples. I guess the warm weather brought them out. It was pretty nice to see, but I really wanted to see Sweet Girl, and despite searching, I did not find her and had to go home. I came back out later on, though, and found her. Girl. Peanut was there, too, and shortly after, Blue showed up, which got interesting when Peanut decided he wanted to share. Honestly, I did not sense any hostility from Peanut. I really feel that he was fine with getting along with Blue. Blue, however, was not too pleased. Eventually, he had enough of Peanut, but Peanut didn't back down. Oh my goodness. Silly old Jays. Blue isn't used to this, so I get it. He's still my favorite. I noticed that the butterflies were still at the squished fruit. This time there was eastern commas and morning cloaks. Something seemed to catch Peanut's attention at one point. He just stood on my hand staring in the other direction. I zoomed in to see, but the camera wouldn't focus. It was another gray jay. I got another shot of it after. I thought that was awesome, but Peanut didn't. On the way back toward home, I saw Hermoso and Abby and Snowy and Webster. Of course, they were a little emotional like usual. I also saw a woolly bear on a leaf nearby. It really is a hot day today. At the last leg of my journey, I saw a family of goldfinches. Such a nice September evening. 
I went out early this morning and it was a cold one, so cold there was frost. The first birds to greet me was a very eager blue and sweet girl, and immediately after Snowy and Webster, which upset its sweet girl quite a bit. She had a lot to say. My little guys were here too and quite rambunctious. Tiny, Tim, Angel, Mini Tim, Kiwi, and Lentil. It wasn't long before some excitement took place though. A juvenile sharp shinned hawk. This upset at everyone. The chickadees began alarm calling and the jays had to stay alert and quick. Interestingly, this was when Peanut showed up. Bad time, but after a while the hawk left. This happens every year around this time. By noon, the frost on the leaves melted. Some of the maple leaves have turned color. One of the sparrows that knows me came out for a treat. Soon they will be gone and I will miss them. This morning I was greeted by some upset jays, as is the usual. Blue and Sweet Girl and Snowy and Webster. Gosh, those jays are such characters. For whatever reason, when there are more than one couple together, the Blue Jays get emotional. I don't really know what it's all about, but I love their behavior. I'm going to guess it has something to do with territory and protecting their mate. Blue and Sweet Girl were in the mood for catching some peanuts, so I played a bit with them. Those two love catching peanuts, but any Blue Jay that gets close to me ends up learning to catch peanuts. Feisty Jay and his mate Belle came by too. I love seeing them two together. Eventually Peanut showed up. Something seemed to have his attention. It turned out to be blueberries. He's the perfect addition to this little woods. This morning Peanut was the first bird to greet me. I love how he sticks his tail up like a fairy wren. I'm really growing to like that Jay. He is sunshine to me. I notice that the needles on the tamaracks are changing. A few are almost completely turned. It's starting to get pretty colorful these days. I got the feeling someone was watching me, and there sure was. A pretty female moose about 50 feet from me. No matter how many times I see them, I'm always struck by their enormous size. But they are, for the most part, gentle giants. During this, Blue and Sweet Girl arrived, eager as ever for their morning rations of their favorite food. Blue. My sweet pear. Peanut wanted some, too. I was able to get a very nice close-up of Sweet Girl. Her feathers look so beautiful. A lovely northern flicker came by, too. He took some interest in what Sweet Girl was eating on the ground. Such cool woodpeckers. I went to visit Hatch and Maggie, and on my way I saw Moose, a young male with a female. She seemed to be playing hard to get. Then another female came out of the woods. This girl, I think, wanted to play. I never get to see moose like this during the rut. It's funny watching Peanut take control over my hand. Sweet Girl don't bother messing with him, and Blue seems to try avoiding him. Hatch and Maggie protested their annoyance with the Jays. Later, I saw Hermoso, Abby, Feisty J, and Belle. That was nice. Hermoso, being the sweetie he is, shared his peanut with Abby. At the very last part of my journey at my feeders, I saw a fox sparrow. It wanted to get on the feeder, but the white-throated sparrow didn't seem to like that idea.
Well, it looks like September is coming to an end. The goldenrods are starting to turn white. I still see a few white-throated sparrows, but it won't be long before they are gone. The warblers, too. At 11.25 a.m., I noticed that the moon was still visible. Peanut came by for some food and then later went off searching for insects. It's a warm day and the birds need to make the most of it. I saw blue flying toward me. I think it's a happy moment for those birds when they spot me. I saw Peanut one more time before I went home and he did something a little unexpected and perhaps a tiny bit gross. He coughed up a pellet into my hand. Not everyone is aware that other birds besides owls cough these up too. I guess this is confirmation that we are now friends. I'm looking forward to mine and Peanut's journey together. I've been wanting a grey jay in my life for so long. And yes, I'm going to keep calling it a grey jay. I know it's Canada jay now, but it's so hard to get used to. And with these guys anyway, there are so many names. People call them Whiskey Jack, Camp Robbers, Meat Bird. But anyway, I'm very happy. Thanks for watching. Happy birding.